Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pierce. Join with me in this, what I know is an extremely important, powerful now word, where we're going to talk about really pressing in and experiencing the heart of worship. And as a consequence of that, we receive his life and we have his life in us now manifesting through us. We know that it's told, we're told in Daniel that those that know their God will do great exploits. This world is looking for something real. And what it has seen so far regarding Christianity is people that go to church, read their Bible, pray, and yet they're just like them. They're just as corrupt. and They don't have anything different. In fact, they look at them as judgmental, mean, and cruel. And they don't want that because Christianity is not offering them anything. God wants a people that are solely His in the secret place. We've explained many times that Christianity is about this intimacy of fellowship in the secret place and His abiding in us. If He abides in us, this temple fills with His glory, then it should manifest it through all that I say, do, and think. The world should experience in me as they come in contact with me that life that either causes them to be convicted, challenges them, or causes them to run. There can be no in-between. We are meant to be carriers, conduits of that life through an experience with Him in the secret place. Join with me as I share insight from John G. Lake in this powerful message. We're going to look at the Our Father and learn how to walk in a life of true worship, focused on Him, transformed by Him, filled with a life that the world needs. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and we just ask of you right now to give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Minister to us, Holy Spirit, open up our hearts and give us a revelation this day of who we are in Christ and what Christ did for us, that we may press in, lay off and cast off the old and put on the new, to be truly transformed by the Spirit filled with your life, that the world may see in us that truth, and that they would be drawn to Jesus. I thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Let's go very quickly to Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus gives the model prayer of the Our Father. Many of us have taken that, and we have religiously saw the power in the prayer, and not saw the heart of Jesus, trying to give us an example, show us how we are to walk in the life that we're to live, and how to be effective in prayer through a communion and fellowship with the living God that must be forged in the secret place of our lives. I love the fact that Father God, knowing that secret place, that place that in our own lives we hold off. That's not the place that I show you, want to reveal to you, because that's where my hurts, my issues, the real me is. And that's the dangerous place, because if I expose it, I can be hurt. I can be injured. But that's the place where the real touch comes forth. That's the place where I'm able to really have the greatest impact. And the Father invites us to come into the secret place of His heart through what Jesus did to experience His love. Think about how many of us have betrayed him, denied him, and all the injuries we've caused to his heart. Yet he still stands and opens and bears his heart to us and invites us to come into the secret place because we need it. And that's the place where we come to know him and we are so wholly transformed by him. But we must give the secret place of our hearts. Every recess, every corner, every aspect of the heart must be given to him. If we're to experience real worship, then it must come from a full surrender of the heart. Look at this in Matthew chapter 6, verses 8 through 13. Jesus starts by saying, do not be like them. Now think about that. We are to make sure that we walk according to the new order, as new creations walking by the Spirit and not as the world does. Our prayer life is not to be like the world, where it's like a slot machine mindset, that I come with all these superstitions, I come based on my need, and the whole relationship with the living God, with God, or any God, is based on a need. 
and I am trying to manipulate and that God is trying to manipulate me to bring me to the place where we bargain and we try to come to a place where maybe I can deserve or earn the need met. That's not how God works. And this is something he wants us to lay hold of. The world works by a relative truth that changes and it's based on currently what's politically correct, what avoids persecution and what makes us feel good what we can rationally consider right. But God operates by an absolute, unchanging truth, unchanging love, unchanging mercy. And that's glorious. Because I disqualify myself so many times from His mercy, but thank God for the cross, and thank God for what Jesus did, I can always enter in into that absolute. I can always experience His absolute forgiveness. It never changes if I will simply come and throw myself on the blood. Now, he goes on, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. We always come trying and somehow to make God understand, appreciate the depth of our need and why he's got to give it. Yet it's clear. He already knows. The change is not him. We're not trying to convince or change him. The change is to occur with us. And this is different. This is radically different than the way the world praise. And this will bring you to a place of walking and praying with power. Because you think about why did the disciples say, teach us to pray? Because they saw in Jesus how when he prayed, he got results every single time. He never missed it. It was effective. It produced phenomenal results. And they saw a difference. And they realized, and they understand that as Jesus was saying, that we are called to pray. And the expectation of Jesus is that we would get answered, that our prayers will be answered if we pray and walk right every time, 100% of the time, our prayers should be answered and we should produce results and fruit of prayer. He goes on, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we can. some people have a different interpretation. They don't want the last part put in. And we miss it because we miss what Jesus is saying. We've taken this example where Jesus wants to lead us into that encounter in the secret place, the realization that Christianity is this intimacy of fellowship and this abiding of Him in us, changing us. Because what's in you will manifest through you. We go on. John J. Lake said this, The mind is the soul life, and it continues being on the earth, of the earth, earthly and doing earthly things until God does something to that mind. And we seek God for a new mind. It is similar to the change which occurs in the spirit and the mind that formerly thought evil and had wicked conceptions becomes as the mind of Christ. Now, there's a lifting that God wants to do to bring us so that we begin to walk and think and act differently. On this earth, people walk dictated to by the soul, by the flesh the mind, the will, the emotions, driven by the five senses and the needs so that this flesh vessel survives, makes it through to the next day. It's all about me and me getting my needs in the thought that if I get my needs, well, then I can bless others. But we're being brought into something radically different, a life where it's no longer about us, but we start off by exalting Him, honoring Him, because there has to be a change and the change is with us. We walk relative, he walks absolute. And he wants to bring us into compliance with that because that's the place of power. That's the place of the new creation. If we now get our eyes off of us and allow the Spirit of God to lead us into the place where our Father, who art in heaven, how would be that name? Your graves are higher, your thoughts are greater, and we begin to worship him so that now how we see things is different. How we act is different because we get consumed in Him, caught up in the secret place. This is the place 
where we must reside. The majority of our time must be spent in these first few verses. This should be your daily life, daily walk, constantly hallowing His name. Jesus explained how that in His earthly ministry, He made known the name of the Father, brought Him glory. And that should be our goal and our objective, so that 24-7, that in every way we think, do, the governing force is Father, that your name would be hallowed, that you would be glorified, that I would accurately represent you, that I would not fall short in any way, but just lifting you up. The world sees you, not me. There's a lifting up. There's a glorifying of you, not me. Now, Lake added this, the church at large recognizes the salvation of the spirit, but they have not recognized the salvation of the mind from the power of sin. And there has to be in a secret place something that happens where the mind bows, where the mind is no longer dictating. And those strongholds, those entry points, those thoughts that we have so allowed, my rights, my opinions, and all these things which captivate us and hinder us and prevent God moving effectively in our lives, bow. I never forget the day where the Lord met with me. I was in a just desperate season. I've been in ministry many years, but not producing the fruit. And I was like praying. And I'm like, God, I'm doing everything. And I'm probably doing it more than anybody else. But I'm missing it. What's wrong? And he turned up and explained how the battle is in the soul. And how I must bring every thought in obedience to him. Captive to him. The emotions, the hurts, the offenses. The areas that we don't think about. That sting and paralyze us. Because God wants heart to heart an encounter and a change that we now begin to walk by the spirit and the spirit man now brings the thought the soul the flesh man into compliance into obedience to christ so we're no longer walking by the flesh i'm no longer dictated to by the mind but walk by the absolute which is according to the spirit in first corinthians 2 16 it says for who has the mind of the lord that he would instruct him but we have the mind of christ we have to walk as Jesus walked, in this place of whole out surrender. What made Jesus the Christ, the Master? And that's the example that He left us, was walking while He was perfect God. He walked in this earth as perfect man, under the anointing, filled with the Holy Spirit, surrendered to the Holy Spirit, demonstrating how this flesh, when brought into complete compliance to the living God, can achieve the glory for the Father. That should be the model we pursue. That should be the life, the standard that we live by. Now listen to this. In Isaiah chapter 55, the Lord is speaking and says, Let the wicked forsake his ways and his, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now think about it. the wicked, those of twistedness, forget his ways and the unrighteous his thoughts. Because this is an area that hinders us, prevents us. But what about my rights? And we consume but this. And how much time does the enemy, through a sting, through a hurt, get us preoccupied where the offense speaks so loud, it's got our full mind share instead of the Lord? Are we willing, especially when we are offended, to bow that because I cannot afford to grieve the Holy Spirit? I cannot afford to lose this. Have you experienced that life? That life that brings you into the abundant life, not just when you get to heaven, but here on the earth, that separates you. That you have something that cannot be manufactured, something that cannot be made, cannot be done. But it is something that comes from the living God, and is imparted to you, and it is everything. It's what we crave, it's what we need. It makes you whole, it makes you complete. And it's priceless when you taste of it. It is overwhelming when you've just experienced it. And there's nothing that you would not give to have it. And when you get filled, you discover there's nothing you want to do to harm it, to injure it. And it separates you. The world either is convicted and wants it and runs to you, and are challenged because they say, whatever, we have to have that. Or they flee from you, persecute you because they see that thing. And they've got to destroy it because it convicts them. This life separates you. This is what makes Christianity the greatest thing on the earth because it's filled with the life. You're not trying to do something and be something and overcome something, but you're simply 
surrendering, yielding, and experiencing and having fellowship with the living God. And He is abiding in you, lifting you, bringing you into this. For it says, let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And I just want to stop and say this, that if you're backslidden, if you are in sin, if you've ran from the Lord, that you would experience this. Many people walked where they were trying to experience the Lord through a formula, through doing this. They were doing all the church things, all the religious things, but they didn't have the intimacy. They tasted something, and you're longing for that. But you just, how do I get it? All these things didn't perfect it. But in the secret place of His presence, you can come in by way of the blood. And I'm thankful, thankful to God that His mercy is absolute. His compassion is absolute. And I can stand in it. And it is demonstrated through the cross, which was absolute. So I throw myself on that cross. And by faith, I enter in. As I confess of my sins and lay aside the old, you can run to Him this day. Today, you can experience Him and be lifted and be drawn up into that living relationship, fellowship, abiding in. He goes on, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and nor are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We can't even begin to comprehend because his thoughts are complete and absolute. The complexity of them, how he upholds all things, how he creates all things, how he does all things, how he is in all things, it's beyond us. And he knows back, future, present, past, all directions, comprehends it all perfectly. And when he declares something, it's absolute and we're so relative. And he wants to lift you and bring you into this place where we walk his thoughts, his ways. I am so grateful in the secret place how the Holy Spirit wants to take up the deep things of God and reveal it to you, to show you what Jesus did, remind you, and bear witness of who you now are in Christ. That occurs in the secret place. That's a lifting. That's an oh, glorious place, and it's an infilling. Lake went on to explain this. There's probably no more delightful thing on earth than to watch a soul praying to God when the light of God comes on and the life of God fills the nature and that holy affection that we seek Him from uh, others find expression in Him, that all of a sudden you are brought into this place of this life, and this life overflows, it fills every fiber of your being, and you stand and you know it, you're complete, nothing missing, nothing lacking, and there's no words to describe it. That's real worship. I look at in this hour, though God wants us to bring us into a place where we are revived. But many of us say, I am revived. I don't need revival. But we walk carried by the anointing of the call. We achieve results and we say, look. But what we don't understand is God wants to lift us, to take us beyond us, to take us to a place where there's more. I look at, and I've done, I'm doing a series on revival. And you see how in the revival, God would move. And you would see a revival here and there, like today. But people became unsatisfied and saying, it's got to be more. And God wants the people that want more. Because they experience that God is the above God, exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we dare ask, think, or imagine. He's always the God of the more. And He wants a people that taste and experience and know Him and cry out more. God, I'm grateful you're moving in my life. I'm grateful you're moving in the church more. Let's go beyond these four walls more. Let's reach more churches. Let's see more souls for Jesus. We think of revival simply because we want to have more people in our church. We want to see our ministry expanded. And what we're seeing is not a revival, but the impact of an effective marketing campaign. God wants real revival where lives come into a real experience, a real abiding, radical change where that church is sending more out and as they send more out, which is totally contradictory to what we think of, God brings more in. Because as you give, you receive. As you pour out, He pours in. It's an upside down kingdom. And we look at the early church, they turned the world upside down by being so revived that they became co-workers with Christ, God stretching them and doing beyond them through them as they abided in the secret place demonstrating that living, living fellowship with the living God. They had something that the world now wanted. Lake explained, This is what the Lord is asking from you, and if you want to gratify the heart of Jesus Christ, that is the only way in all the world to do it. The invitation from Christ is not, Give me thine head, 
The invitation is, my son, give me thine heart. That is an affectionate relationship, a real union in God. And this is what God wants. So we no longer walk by the old order dictated to by the flesh, by our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, our memories, but we walk by this new life where we give Him every recess, every cavity, every component of the secret place of our heart. We don't like to because that means so much to us. And I don't want to be hurt or injured. But when we trust Him and experience how He's given us His heart, opened up the secret place, that tender place, knowing that we could abandon Him, we could reject Him, we could hurt Him. But His love is so great and so absolute that He cannot deny it to us. And He's calling us to open up our hearts to Him, trust Him, because He absolutely will heal it, absolutely bring you to completion, bring you to place, nothing missing, nothing lacking. He never fails. He never comes short. He's always above. The best you can think falls short of what He can do. It is more. And He wants you to know that and to be filled with that. I look at these worship leaders and how so many of them have fallen. And I, I question it. I was driving the other day, and as I was driving, I put on some worship music. And the Lord turns and says, just because that touches you doesn't mean it touches me. And a fear came on me. I turned the thing off. Because emotionally, the soul arena, it felt good. It lifted the soul. It lifted my emotions. It made my memories and all that soul arena feel good. I thought I was in worship. But God wants something deeper where it lifts the heart and it exalts Him. We look at the beginning of our Father. And it's not about the presentation of my needs. See, that's most of our prayer life. God, I am in desperate need of this and I come. Or I have this prayer list and I'm here to present that. But it starts where we're supposed to reside, in the place of worship, in the place where we get the greater revelation of who He is. Our prayers will be so quickly answered if we understood Him, if we got a greater revelation of how great, how big, how faithful, how absolute He is. And we get it when we abide in the sacred place, have that fellowship with the Word, and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us because we're open and soft before Him. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 and 27. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And I will be careful, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. So now I'm no longer just doing, but I'm being. And what's in me outflows from me. Because the change is here, previously, trying to overcome and same as the world, trying to be good and holy and walk right, and struggling because I never could, and therefore you have to go back to a relative truth to make the thing work in the secret place. God in me doing what I can't do as I become weak, as I surrender, as I yield, as I cling, seek. The word is very clear, seek His face. Most of us seek His hand. And the call from heaven in this hour and the separation that's going on are those that seek His face, those that are real from the inside, transformed and by the Spirit of the living God. Lake went on to say this, Think of the fineness of God's purpose. He expects that same marvelous spiritual union that is brought to pass between your soul and His to be extended so that you embrace in that union every soul around you. So something begins to change. You look at their father, and it's not my father. I'm coming based on my needs. I'm coming because in my life, for me to survive, to live today, I need this and I need that. But we're so changed. And this the world can't understand because the world can't walk in this. It's about them. But we now live wholly, completely, no longer for ourselves, so that you trust that He is your justice. He is your vindication, even if you never see it on the earth. See, many of us, because we're injured and hurt on the earth, we hope and think that if I hold on, that somehow that person will get it and make restitution and I will be whole. But when I give Him my heart, I let go and trust that all these things are His. And that I cannot make that person ever understand, be convicted, and make restitution. And I may never see it, 
but God is my justice. And God has not forgotten me. And God will keep me. And no matter even if these people spend the rest of their life resisting me, hindering me, attacking me, that's not my concern. My concern is Him. And I lift Him up. See, this has often been the area of the enemy's captivators, hindered us, and that's where He had me. But when I walk in this place, I walk in a higher level, a new order, the order of the Spirit, the order of His love. And now, instead of me being captivated, helped, concerned by them, I'm praying for them. I'm loving them. This is something so radically different. We're all frightened to be walked over, abused. But see, when you are in the secret place, you are secure. And you're no longer looking and focused, but you see something bigger, beyond the temporal. So they may think they're walking over, abusing you, but you understand the laws of the Spirit. And you understand, like Stephen, that you could be stoned, but God was using it as seed to bring someone else in. You understand that as you walk in radical obedience, the Spirit of God is doing something greater. And as you yield that thing, you are allowing God to actually move rather than hindering Him and stopping Him. And often the truths, it's not often, always, the truths for which we stand, we are tested for. And sometimes that test is hard and difficult, but we are, must be fully committed, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the consequences. Regarding this secret place, lay hold of this. Lake said, oh, that is what it means when it talks about being baptized in one spirit, submerged, buried, enveloped, enveloping the, spirit, the one spirit of God. Now, we go back, it's our Father. It's our Father. And so my heart, my mind is for the people. I look at Daniel praying, not praying, God forgive them because I walk righteous. And you know my relationship with you. But Father, forgive us. Because he stepped in the gap now for the people. He stood as an intercession. And that's what Jesus did. And that's the call for us. That we identify with them, stand in the gap for them, crying out. Because in the secret place, we just simply want to stay not offending the living God. What we live hold of means everything, and I will not allow this to be injured, interfered with. I hold on to this because this is what makes me whole, complete. This is what I have to give. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against him so that you would not grow weary and lose heart. King James says you be weird and faint in your minds that soul arena that you would fall back into the soul arena and by the enemy's hands and by the work of your own flesh and what the world is saying, you would quit. That you would allow the mind to consume you, speak louder, that it drowns out the voice of heaven and this relationship. Oh, I pray that in the name of Jesus, this relationship would mean everything to you, that even those things that you thought you absolutely had, this is more. And that in this casting off, letting go, and trusting them to the Lord, laying them on the altar, that you enter into something that's bigger, greater, and that God is able to so much do more beyond this, if you will simply trust Him, to bring you into something beyond yourself, beyond your wildest dreams. Oh, we have so hindered Him because we've been staying in the place of the flesh instead of entering the place of the Spirit, and walking by a different motivation. John G. Lake said this, We boast of our development in God. We speak glowingly of our spiritual experiences. But it is only once in a while that we find ourselves in the real love of God. I want to stop there. I look at so many believers and their whole life, it's about them. They've got to boast in their experiences. They've got to boast about them. And they do that because of the issues of the heart, because of the soul. And God wants to bring us to the place, like the Our Father says, that we live in that place of always hallowing His name, always lifting up and honoring His name. I don't need you to, I need your attention like that. I don't need to boast of me to make me feel good. I no longer live for myself, but I am blessed 
to be a blessing. I want an outflow, and I want in everything I do to draw people to a deeper relationship with Jesus, glorifying. May my life properly represent, reveal, and draw you always to Him, Jesus, and His Word. To provoke you to go deeper every day, to press on higher every day that you've got to know Jesus, that your life is built upon Him and His Word. And may the Holy Spirit open the Word like never before. And as you surrender and give your all, show you fresh, deeper revelation, not taking or adding to the Word, but always building upon line upon line, precept upon precept. I will continue. The greater part of the time we are in ourselves rather than in Him. That evidences just one thing, that Christ has not yet securely secured that perfect control of our lives, that subjection of our natures, that absorption of our individualities, so that He is able to impregnate it and maintain it in Himself. We recede, draw back, close up, and imprison our Lord. My heart cry is that you would come to this place of such abandonment, of real worship, of that place of experiencing the relative with Him. Sorry, the absolute. Sorry, the absolute. Absolute love, absolute faithfulness, absolute truth. And that you're wrecked by it. Because something absolute is so beyond anything we can dare ask, think, or imagine. It's stronger than death. It goes beyond. beyond. And when we have a true encounter with it, it breaks us. It challenges every part, every fiber of our being, and calls us to receive or to run. May we receive that truth and allow it to change us. Allow every area that's not in compliance with it to bow, that His truth may radiate from us. Our bodies in harmony, our minds in harmony, our spirits in harmony with that truth, outflowing. Always glorifying so that we're living in a place of worship, lifting others. I want to finish with this. The secret of worship is that it assists men's hearts to open. They become receptive and the love of God vents in their nature for a little while. That's true worship. Not making them feel good, but drawing them into this intimacy and the proof is the transformation. I really pray that in the name above all names that you will be drawn deeper. Pursue Him with everything you've got. And if you're back sitting, would you repent and come back? Throw yourself on the mercy. Would you experience that life? You need it. The hour is late. And His arms are outreached. This love is so beyond. It's absolute. Not relative. It doesn't change. It doesn't matter about your circumstance. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what they say. It's absolute. Unchanging. Not a shadow of change with it. And it's calling you to come into the secret place and have such an encounter today. I hear the Spirit and the Master say, those who will not go beyond themselves, those who will not get up from that offense that has crippled them, those who will not Trust wholly, completely, even at cost, are not worthy of the Master. He gave us all. And He said, look what I've done for you. What will you do for me? Will you dare come and stand on my mercy and experience that life and be filled with it? It's free. It's an oil that flows in to flow out that every fiber of your being filled with His life enables you to live whole, complete, nothing mixing on this earth, lifting others. You no longer live for yourself, but for Him, and blessed to bless others, bringing others into this intimacy. Oh, He wants to use you. He wants you to be a walking revival, to turn this nation, this generation upside down. You were called, anointed, appointed for such a time as this. But it's got to be bigger than you. It's got to be beyond you. And that happens in the secret place as we're forged in the fire of His presence. 
every part of our flesh consumed in a barbecue of heaven until the potter has taken the clay and made it into a vessel of honor, a vessel that yielded, a vessel that surrenders, a vessel that allows all those hurts, entry points to be surrendered. That place of total yieldedness, which is demonstrated by the daily pursuit and the heart cry, hallowed be thy name. Be exalted, be lifted up. I live for you, for your glory. It brings you into a place where you know him and you know the secret of his heart. And therefore you're able to do great exploits and you're kept because that which is entrusted to him, any area that you do not entrust, it's not kept. But that which you entrust to him, 2 Timothy, entrust all, all to him. And watch what he is able to do because he's able to keep it. Amen. I really pray that you're blessed like never before. Lift it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hold this, we breathe on them. Minister to them right now. There's no distance in the Spirit, and I lift them up, and I crowd mercy. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus to drench them, cleanse them. Father God, I thank you. Convict. Pour out the rain right now and soften the heart. Let them hear your heart cry, calling, lifting, that you are pursuing them, and you won't give up in them and that you desire them right now to know you. Father, in the name of Jesus, see us, and in your great mercy, would you touch us? Would you open our eyes to see, ears to hear, Father, right now, that we might see your glory and experience your life because of you, Jesus. We honor you. We love you, Jesus. We bless you. We thank you for all that you are, all that you've done. Father, you are El Shaddai, the more than sufficient, the Almighty God. You are the high place. You are everything to us. We just lift you up. We worship you. We surrender to you. Have every part of our lives, every part, every part of my heart, every part of the soul, my mind, my emotions. Let it bow. Let it give you glory. And I yield. Holy Spirit, come. Just have your way. Fill me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Let my opinions bow. Let my preconditions bow. Let everything that's of me bow. Teach me. Let me be open, soft, and teach me. Open the Word. Let me abide in the Word. Give me such a hunger so that your word would truly be a light unto my feet in the name of Jesus. I thank you. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Bless them. Bless them. Let them be strengthened in your mighty name. And I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I really pray this message has blessed you. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification button. Check out the series. And as you do, you really help us. My heart is to reach as many in this last hour. We are about working on building a revival center here, a place that we can train and develop people so that they can run and fulfill their high call, be catapulted into their purpose in this hour, a place we can gather and be refreshed so that we can run strong for Him. I thank you and pray that you would want to be part of it, either as a prayer partner or as a financial partner, or if you just want to be a partner for this ministry. For more information, simply go to God's Generals and Revivals.com and go to the partner page. To be a prayer partner costs you nothing. And we don't sit there and, and manipulate money. We're just looking for people that prayerfully will consider being a part of this and see the big vision. Now, I just pray that, that as you sign up, if you're a financial partner, would you consider uh, letting us know if you want to receive our email newsletters or not? Because if you do, you get invitations to our services and you get, you know, this newsletter twice a week, if not more. Amen. I just want you to know that we are praying for you. You are loved and you are truly being prayed for. And that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because and through him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.